Welcome to Maitland in the Hunter region of beautiful regional New South Wales, a popular holiday makers hotspot with everything from outdoor family activities to quaint villages and luxury wineries with gorgeous local produce. And it just happens to be the ideal location for round four of our Penrite Promex Championship presented by AMX Superstores. Hi, I'm Kate Peck and with me is 11 time national motocross champion, Lee Hogan. Hogs, it's really nice to leave those gum boots at home for a sunny, hard-packed track. Yeah, well, hasn't it been a wet and soggy start to this season, that's for sure. But we're here at Maitland, finally. We've got some great weather, fantastic track, pre track preparation, phenomenal. And in MX2, Brody Connolly on the Honda. He just took all the mud and mayhem into his stride to take the round win. He sure did, very similar to Jed Beaton in the MX1 category. He made a very wet and muddy track look super dry. He could go wherever he wanted. Let's not forget, he's a Kiwi. They love that stuff. <laughs> and on the KTM, Nathan Crawford. It's been a real up and down season for him. Moto1, there was the mechanical DNF, but he rebounded in Moto2 to take that win. Well, 2023 really has been a season of high and lows for Nathan Crawford. He's had the highest of highs. He's won, and when he has, it's been spectacular. But he's had some point deficits, getting taken points off him, of course, from round one. He's also had a mechanical DNF. So he needs to try to find some kind of form. And you've got to wonder how mentally strong he is. He seems to still be in a good frame of mind. Let's hope we see more. And finally, an MX3, Byron Dennis on the gas gas. Brings home the bacon and takes the championship lead. He sure does. MX3, it's such an exciting class. It has the closest battles. But this year for 2023, we haven't seen one particular rider that just keeps stringing together win after win. Everyone's sort of up and down a little bit. But Byron Dennis is the one. He's got the red plate and he's looking the best at the moment. Can he keep it? We'll have to wait and see. All right, well, let's take a look at the Michelin track preview with Moto Mad expert commentator Danny Ham. Welcome to this week's Michelin track preview here at Maitland. We get a chance this week to head out onto the track and just take a quick glance at how rough and tricky this track is becoming before the pros get out there and show us how it's really done. off the finish line we move into a s-bend that is traditionally an inside to inside corner but for this round it has a brand new split lane which is going to even things up quite a lot across the mechanics area and over this jump and already you can see the ruts have started to form and also look at those shadows it is very difficult to see just how deep and rough all of these corners are becoming down into what is the second turn off the start line we again find a whole bunch of ruts you really have to be on your game to know exactly which rut you want to hit through a very slippery hard pack part of the track and into this long sweeping right hander before we hit a couple of our big jumps now this is one circuit of a couple that we'll see some proper hard pack surfaces for this series down this very long very fast straight and into this right hander with this jump up the inside to try and even things out just bouncing through these corners into a left-hander here that has five or six ruts formed up as I ride it. And we are lucky this week to finally get a track that has formed up a bit. So we get a good idea just exactly to see what these guys are gonna be in for. Through another split section, across this right and into the long roller section. Now the riders don't have much time to get any momentum into these, so it becomes very difficult, and especially if you're feeling the arms just like I am right here, it is very hard to get through. Up and over this tabletop, again, long, fast right hand of the sand here, very shallow, but look at that line just to the outside there, very fast. If you can utilize that, you're going to have a massive advantage. And these ruts just aren't forming a nice, perfect arc. There is three or four stages through that last turn where you need to make those corners. Down towards the finish line, a little kick off this, and you have completed a lap here at Maitland. Take a look at the Pirelli lineup, MX2, Moto number one, Jesse Dobson, Reese Budd. The Circo boys were on fire yesterday in qualifying. 
Wilson Todd Crawford Cosford with a good qualifying time as well Ferguson and a few more Barham I expect to see some good things out of him as the track gets a little bit harder Blake Fox up there Mini a little bit further back than what we're expecting to usually see so maybe he might have a bit of work ahead of him but just touching on the Wilson Todd thing he really has had everything thrown at him leading into all of these however he still managed to get some great points in this championship yes of course and let's not forget about Brody Connolly his Honda teammate who has also had glandular fever and all about sorts so watch for the drop of the gate here moto number one with these guys not racing yesterday let's check them out as they head into this iconic turn one Wilson Todd the big red number one and I tell you what I'm stretched to imagine or think when the last hole shot didn't come from either Wilson Todd or Brody Connolly as once again we find that number one machine at the head of the pack but Brody Connolly way back in the pack at the moment and also Crawford there just in the middle of screen the yellow stripes gear he is way back as well as we see that fantastic shot nice and early there that is Dobson there in second place the 102 machine Matt Moss in fourth on our time in Caleb Barham with a good start as well Crawford the big hitter is probably the only one that is a long way back in Connolly as you said so a lot of work ahead caught Connolly just a second ago so he is definitely buried deep in this pack as the riders try to sort themselves out with the seven hole shot of Ward of course going to the number one machine of Wilson Todd maybe that's what Wilson needs have Kate talk to her on the line that seems to have helped in this one well, Jesse Dobson, the uh, first of the seven, oh, 75. That's Cosford. Okay, 754, is it? Okay, let's just uh, try to make sure, double check on that one. Number 16, Caleb Barr, oh. finds himself in the top three. Dobson. Oh, oh, oh that was the slowest motion crash. It sort of it happened in three stages, didn't it? That's what we spoke about in that track preview, those corners, especially that one. They're in stages, the left-hander. It's not just one nice big arc. There's little hooks, there's little straight parts, and it's difficult. Once you lose that balance, it's hard to try and regain it. As we see, the 29 machine of Noah Ferguson up there as well. Great to see him with a good start. Let's see if he can continue that form. We've seen in previous years just how fast he can be, and right now he sits in a good position. Moss, though, the guy, really pushing hard at the moment. And a really creative, awesome line from Matt Moss on I that cornerback yeah. there. It was really fine. It's a good dirt. Little mistake there. Drops him back into the clutches of Ferguson. But just about to make mention, you know and I know, Danny, how hard it is to step down to the 250 class and be competitive. These kids hold it on. They're so fast, and they ride at a different intensity. And you can't really expect Mossy to just come down and immediately be up the pointy end of the field. But of course, somehow he manages to do so. Yesterday, super fast in qualifying as well. Just now onto the back of this little trio of riders is the 199 machine. Of course, Nathan Crawford, we've seen such fast speeds out of him through the series so far and expect to see him continuing to move forwards. Barham almost able to do 2-2 two -two through those rollers. A great run out of that corner, but Moss still there. And also on the back of Crawford was one of the fastest guys in qualifying of Reese Budd, the 22 machine. He is starting to show this speed as well in this race what a race is unfolding in front of our eyes right now as they make their way into maxis the right hand turn in the middle of the circuit and head towards the big jumps they get some huge air time off this next one danny wow it looked like bud has made the pass there on ferguson ferguson slowing right down there whether he just lost vision there for a second or something else was wrong. Haruki Yokoyama yeah. is just, also oh. there. Oh, Moss down. Just and just. that was also Crawford that went off track. Oh, it looks like Moss has hurt himself. What has he done here? There's the dust of Crawford getting back on track. So that fell apart so quick. All right, let's hope that's nothing major for, uh, for Matt Moss. Just maybe a little corky to the leg or something because... It's been so good watching him do his thing. Let's take a look at the Honda replay as he heads through. Little bit squirrely there, but tipping it in. It's in this first part of the rut. Front yes. wheel. Front wheel just slipped in that dirt. And a bit of a kick off to the side of the track there for Nathan Crawford. Yeah, it looked like Moss just missed the entry to that rut. A little bit of a step out going into it. And uh, he sat over the top of it. So unfortunate for him, he has dropped back. Now Crawford, we saw 
great speed out of him. He's straight back there. Is that him behind? He's in third. Yep. So even with the off-track excursion, sits himself there in third place. A 1.46 is the fastest time we saw today in the MX1s as we head back down to Cape. Yeah, just spoke to Nathan Crawford's mechanic, just a really quick one. I asked him if there's more in him and he said yes. He was so excited, he's really found his flow. It's something we've seen a lot out of Crawford when he does find himself in these positions. He can hold this pace for lap after lap, a very strong rider. And as you mentioned at the start, Lee, a very strong mental rider. Oh, oh and that's how race leader's gone down. Now, has he come yeah, together, together with a lapped rider? So it's a Kawasaki there. Oh, that is, that is gonna hurt for Wilson Todd. Very quick, moving out of the way for Nathan Crawford. Now, where has he picked that bike back up again? It was a 17-second gap back to Bud. I believe he'll still be in second place. Yes, there's Bud in the background. He just needs to settle down and try to just continue to punch out these laps. But how about that pressure that we saw from Crawford? It'd be interesting to see if we had any footage at all from what happened with the lap rider there. But uh, you can only imagine that we've had a crash from that Kawasaki rider. We, we don't know who that was. And just Wilson Todd, nowhere to go. Yeah, once you're locked into that rut, you have nowhere to go. And I feel it's the same place we just saw... Um, Barham crash. I reckon we've seen a very similar circumstance, maybe from the lap rider in front, and then as you said, once locked into that line, you had nowhere to go, and it's all happened so quick in front of Wilson Todd. But it's all about Nathan Crawford at the moment. He's got a 12-second lead. There we see Jace Cosford with no peak on the helmet after his early get-off. So, uh, Out of the unfortunately top for him, yeah. He's, uh, yeah, he is nowhere to be seen there. That's unfortunate. It must have been a big hit to where he was through the end of those rollers, a very fast part of the track, uh, possibly going again into those ruts into that left-hander, maybe just bringing him unstuck as we have only got three minutes left to go in this one as Todd through the Blue Crew right-hander and into the Honda left before they go across the mechanics area. But this guy here, he is going to be very difficult to stop today if he continues to ride like this through the Pirelli left, the 199 machine. Nathan Crawford, factory KTM, continues to try and knock back that points deficit that he continually sees himself uh, being challenged at, as you would uh, I think, Lee. He's shown so much speed, he's got himself some great results, but as we said, the last round, that bike failure for him, again, really put a dent in it, but mental strength continues to con come up here and put these great results in. Yeah, I think even in his own words, he came into the series with, I guess, too much of a head of steam. You know, like I think he, he attacked the start of the series a little bit sort of too hard and then had to kind of reset. And he looked like he was on track and then unfortunate. Look, I mean, there were so many people that had mechanical DNFs at Wodonga, but that just, any momentum that he had, it just halted it. He had to come out and did what he did, of course, won the next moto, but it's just, you could not get more of an up and down. We see back there in 11th place, Jesse Dobson trying to make a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a charge here towards the head of the pack, and really does need to be up there well into the top 10. Well, was our top qualifier yesterday uh, on this track, and with the start he had, we thought we might see him up there really pushing for those top three places, but unfortunately, an early crash, a very uh, unfortunate, a simple mistake, just lost the front wheel and then continued to try and battle it through the rest of that corner, but just couldn't quite grab it before it did tip him over, puts him a long way back here. Top rider, though, I think we may see a rebound in moto number two. Certainly has the pace. You see the 86 machine there. Reed Taylor. Taylor. Yeah, so we see some great speed out of him every now and then. Once again, a good result in this one. Yeah, Danny, there's, there's good and bad times to crash. You never want to crash, but if there was a time to not want to crash, it's the early stages of a race. You crash in the first lap or two and you lose a lot of spots. You crash in the first turn, you're basically starting from last. And that's what we saw from Jesse Dobson there. A very early race crash just dropped him so far to the back of the pack. Kata Minia, the 66 machine, back there behind Reed Taylor, just up over the finish line into these 
two switchback corners. He's on the lower side of screen right there. As they go into the area before the mechanics. He sits back there in 12th place at the moment. So a track that is certainly testing the skill level of the very young Caden Minia. There he is up and over the tabletop, but this guy here, Jesse Dobson, continues to move himself forwards. Dobson with some relatively good times there with the 151 that last lap around, but that is not going to move him up too quickly in amongst the rest of this field as Ferguson, the last lap around, two places in front, did a 49.7. So he really needs to uh, continue to bring that race pace up late in this one if he wants to move up a few more places. Well, the only other rider in the 149s is Noah Ferguson back there in sixth place. So, yeah, you're exactly right, Danny. That just goes to show they've kind of gone into settle mode. Nathan Crawford with a nice 12 and a half second gap over Wilson Todd. He's let the race play into his hands and he has well control over that lead at the moment. As we get to the last lap board, Nathan Crawford finds himself on the final lap here. MX2 Moto 1. And uh, what a race it has been for him. He didn't start with the whole shot. He had to work for it. But when it counted, he found himself at the pointy end of the field. Hayden Smith there, the 55 machine. He is back a little bit further. He sits back there in 19th place at the moment. He's bounced back to our leader through the middle part of the track, up over these big tabletops. Nice, nice. little scrub there. He's Very feeling nice. it right now. He is. And has Nice little scrub there, but also just showing that sun plug to the left side of the field there. You know, it's um, it's good. When you're watching Nathan Crawford and he is on, he just makes it look so easy. The first part of the corner is where he gains his momentum. He doesn't stay on those brakes too long coming into the corners, and it just looks nice and smooth. And I think also one of his biggest strengths is the ability to be able to chop and change lines, move five centimetres this way, that way. Because on a track like this, that can keep you out of the shiny, hard pack, bumpy stuff to put you into some nice grippy dirt. It'll be interesting to hear maybe from Crawford. It's just how this track is forming up. Visually to us, it doesn't look like it's got the ruts that we saw yesterday, which may mean that there's not quite as many lines. However, from our view, from their view, it could be completely different. So takes a quick look over at the crowd, actually, Nathan Crawford, as he moves his way towards the finish line. He will complete a very strong opening race for the day, Moto number one winner for the MX2 goes to the factory KTM rider of Nathan Crawford as he continues his winning ways. As we take a look at the Pirelli MX2 Moto number one results, of course, Nathan Crawford, the KTM rider, leads them all home in front of Wilson Todd, Reese Spud, Ryan Alexanderson with that best performance, Haruki Okiyama with also a fantastic fifth place in this one. Great ride from Haruki, Noah Ferguson in sixth, Brody Connolly next through out of our top 10, Caden Minia, Reed Taylor, Hugh McKay, Ryan Fitzpatrick. We got a glance at Fitzpatrick there, another good result, Blake Fox back there in 16th, so a little bit further back for him. As we see Cosford, a rider we did see quite a bit in previous rounds. He's back there in 23rd after that big crash early in the moto. Matt Moss down there at the bottom uh, in 40th, unfortunately for him. Let's hope he comes back in the next race. Let's go down to Kate. In P1 on the KTM, Nathan Crawford, after a bit of an average start, you really found your flow out there. Yeah, that start was terrible. Um, yeah, just uh, not actually sure what happened there. I'll have to go back and try and figure it out. But uh, yeah, just charged hard on the first lap. Um, man, it was ca honestly, it was chaos out there on the first lap. I actually just quickly wanted to apologize to Jace. I'm pretty sure uh, we come together on the first lap and he went down. So um, look, I'm happy to get the win. Uh, we still got another moto to go. And uh, I felt pretty good out there. The bike was handling good. And uh, hopefully we can just back it up in the next moto. And how is the track forming up out there? Yeah, it's... Um, it's just polished, like uh, like right before the up ramps, super greasy, and um, actually it was it was quite sketchy out there. So uh, it just makes for a technical race track, really. Um, you got to be uh, hitting your marks and on the ball the whole time. So um, can't really switch off out there. But uh, yeah, happy with the motor. Good luck in the next one. Thank you. All right, well, what a race number one we saw for the MX2 class. Don't go anywhere. Quick little commercial break. When we come back, MX3.
Well, the weather is about to roll in very soon, Danny Ham, but the atmosphere here has been electric at Maitland. It's only going to be a short little bit of rain, but it could come down pretty heavy knowing this area. So as we take a look at the Maxxis Tyres MX3 Moto, number three lineup, I love this race. Jack Mather, Jake Cannon, Jet Olsop, Connor Towell, Campbell Williams were the five fast ones. Kai Woods there, of course. We've got Kobe Drew, Ryan King, Seth Shackleton, Finley Mance, and Cade Kingsford. Yeah, so many fast kids in this one, or young riders in this one, and it really produces some excellent racing every time they're out on track. And believe me, we're in for another spectacular race, and they're going to get this one done before any of this rain hits, I feel. Well, Danny, I'm going to say it's a, it's a not, a, not a matter of if, but when the rain strikes. Does it strike within the next 20 minutes plus a lap? It'll be at the very end of this one if it happens, but I reckon we're going to get very close to getting this one cleared out. And I know these guys on the line are going to be pumped if they could do that. Last thing you want to do is tackle a very wet and slippery Maitland circuit as the 15 second board is up. We will only be seconds away from this one. Who will jump out first? Can we see Tao with another great start? Or will it be Jake Cannon from this side of the gate? Revs are up, gate's about to drop. Jump from Allsop, also a good jump from Mather on the far right hand side, but it looks like the whole shot's going to come from the middle of the track. So we'll try to pick up who is in the lead, number 75. Olander. Olander, Mather back there in second, and that looks to be Byron Dennis in third place. Yes, it right, was. Right, getting jammed up there. Is that Connor Tell who made a big mistake there? And he's dropped back about four or five positions. Yeah, so unfortunate for Tell after such a great start already starting to get dark. Maybe that rain might hit us a little earlier than we thought. There was Kai Wood, the number 10. So all the good riders up the front again. So we are set for another spectacular race. Alanda, the unusual one of this one, but up the top they're confirming it is the Matrix Concept Whole Shot Award going to Travis Olander. This is a position where we expect to see Olander. He is a very fast rider, technical rider as well. Very tall on the bike. He can move that thing around. Yes, he is technical. We saw him do some great things in last year's Supercross Championship, so we know he's good on the airtime out there, but he's looking comfortable at the head of the pack. He's going to come under some increasing pressure from Jack Mather, who, when you're coming off a win from the last race, you're just bubbling with confidence, and I think it's only a matter of time before we see Mather make that move up into the lead. There's the 110 machine there I just caught a glimpse of. Ryan King, he's got himself a good top 10 start as well, as we see Dennis to the inside here, but Cannon around the outside, and they are all over the back wheel of Mather. Wow, Cannon has made the pass. Has he up the inside? All oh, so close as we go into this split. Let's see how this one plays out. Oh, beautiful scrub there from Jake Cannon. And Mather is doing everything he can to keep the junior behind him. Have a look at this split section. Great racing here from the MX3 class. Yes, super impressed by the number 75 machine. Two seconds back now from Byron Dennis, who looks very, very comfortable with the current track conditions. And there we have it. Have a look at the rain starting to fall now. Watch the track conditions deteriorate. Oh, man, what a day to be out on the track. As we see a good battle just behind this one here between Cannon and Woods. They are back and forward over this last lap, changing positions a couple of times. And I did see just there in the background too, Jet Olsop. Kai it's... Woods, sorry, Danny, just looks like Kai Woods there, perhaps making a pass. And here we see the move set up there from Byron Dennis making that pass on Travis Olando. Nice little Honda replay there. Thank you. And now Mather has made that pass also on Alanda. Cannon right there as well, trying to take advantage of this. All oh, that back into the mouth. Oh, red flag, that's our leader that's gone down. Yellow flag. No, not red flag, sorry, yellow flag. I saw a red bike, my apologies, but I think that was the leader that has gone down. Have a look it at is. that rain coming in sideways here. His riders need to keep their wits about themselves. Olander back all over the rear end of Jack Mather. Is it going to snow here? I'm not sure. I think we have hail coming. <laughs> oh, look how wet it is. Look at Kai Wood out of nowhere. He now finds himself in second place with the potential Whoa. of jumping into the lead in only just a couple of turns. He has. <laughs> he just jumped he four or four. four spots in two corners. He's just gone, the weather's coming. This is my time to shine. Kai Woods has come into his own here. Keep it on two wheels, son. 
Wow, this class always delivers the excitement as we see Maitland looking to the inside here. Jake Cannon up the inside of Orlando as well. He's in the third place. And there is Olsov closing in on the back of all of these riders as well. Looking through our score, our timing, Dennis is still back there in sixth, though. There's a chance he may move forwards yet. What a great angle here. We can see the rain coming down and what these riders are having to deal with as the pressure continues from Matha. Let's have a look here. We've got Olander. We've got the, the pass from Woods as he completes his fourth and final pass on this group. He was half a bike length before behind, going up Just look the at the end. horns coming out of his helmet. You can... Oh, no! Oh, and he's down! Oh, and he's got a hold of the throttle. This is what we said. The guys will need that that throttle is stuck on a bit, maybe. But this is what we said. The riders really have to pay attention now to how much grip is going to be in the ground. It's going to be super slippery out there. Six minutes left on the clock for Moto3 of the MX3. And have a look at the charge from Campbell Williams. Campbell Williams could potentially get the overall yet on this round with this particular ride. Around the outside now, and Byron Dennis, they're going to be side, side by side going down here. Dennis to the outside, clearly here, trying to hold out that line, but Williams has got a good run. He looks just super smooth and calculated, does Campbell Williams at the moment. Heads to the inside, will it be enough? Not quite. Byron Dennis comes across, controls that line. Outside option for Williams. How will this pan out as they exit the split lane? Well, across the split there, it's deceiving, but our scoring had uh, made the make What a up. drive from Campbell Williams, and that'll slot him up into the race lead, Danny. Well, he didn't need to do that for the overall of the round, but this will secure his top place on the podium out of nowhere. Have a look at this replay. Perfect drive on a track that is super slippery at the moment. Driving and that back wheel down to the ground. The Kawasaki rider has moved himself from a long way back. He wasn't even in shot when we started talking about this crazy battle that was going up, up front, and he is clearing out from the rest of the field. What an impressive ride, just in a league of his own as far as comfort-wise. And I guess, as Kate picked up before, he just loves these conditions. Ooh, if Matha make, uh, sorry, if Dennis can make this pass, it's going to be super tight between first and second on the uh, overall for the round. So he really needs to make this pass, but you've got to keep a cool head about you. Can't let those emotions get into it just yet. One and a half minutes to go. So they've got two more laps to go in this one. Williams still looks good. Matha though, again, the big charge up the inside. There is Cannon. So the big picture, Danny, of course, is the championship point. So if positions stay exactly how they are at the moment, Byron Dennis will continue to hold that red plate. He's got 139 points to his name, but only four points back to Jack Matha. Now, let's not forget, Matha had a 10th place in Moto1 yesterday. So it's been, a, uh, it's been a very good showing for Matha. But once again, we don't seem to find anyone to go to string a 1-1-1 a one, one, one or a one 1-2, for example. We seem to be a little all over the shop. But wow, what a ride for Campbell Williams. And Williams will be the big beneficiary of this as he would move himself up also in the championship to 110 points. So a little bit off first and second. But this here could be the start of the momentum developing and continuing through the rest of the championship. Sometimes you just got to get that good race under your belt and then things start to roll your way. And that's the case, Danny, for Campbell Williams. You know, this is his third year in MX3. You'd have to think surely his last year. So we've had a rider go down and trying to make it yeah, so hard to see with mud all over the back. We're trying to pick up who that is. His bike is on the track. That's an awkward position for that bike to be in. So we've got all the uh, mechanics there trying to help out and push the riders away. But it is in a bit of a, uh, an awkward position there for the riders coming over that tabletop. Williams around the outside, still looking for those nice grippy lines or the bit looser dirt rather than that shiny mud slick area up the inside. 
And sometimes, though, you just can't avoid it between these jumps. How slippery does it look? Well, I tell you what, Danny, this is, I do want to talk about it until we get to the, you know, absolute latter stages of the race because it's still well and truly up for grabs here as we see edging into the shot just behind Campbell Williams is still Byron Dennis. We're on lap 11 of 12, so we've got just over a lap to go for Campbell Williams to hold on to what potentially could be his first ever overall victory in the MX3 category class in national events. Have a look, totally different lines outside for Byron Dennis. Still close enough to strike if there's any small mistake or hold up for our race leader in behind these uh, lapped riders. And they are thick at the moment as well. Still a nice little gap there. Good couple of seconds as we get to the closing part of this second last lap. Just a couple of turns and he will receive that last lap board. Totally different lines between first and second place rider. It just looks like they're riding around like right now, doesn't it, Lee? It's, uh, it's one of those things you've really got to be patient. Last lap board coming out now for our race leader, Campbell Williams. Can Byron Dennis put a late charge in here and pull something out of the bag? Once again, totally different lines in the last of the switchbacks there and nice corner speed. As we mentioned, the sting in the tail. Does Byron Dennis have one more to go? He's going to try to put any pressure that he can onto Campbell Williams, a little bit of implied pressure, and see if he can force that mistake because anything can happen with these kind of track conditions. Not only does Campbell have to deal with the track conditions, he has to deal with the lapped riders, the changing track conditions, and you know, trying to pick the right line, not getting caught behind someone. Wow. Did did we just glance a challenge for the lead? We there? sure did. It's right there. They're right next to each other. The inside, outside line options. Oh, goggles like off. Williams. He's got no vision. This is side by side at the moment. Big run down the inside here. Can Byron Dennis launch down? There's a rider in the road, though. This is going to play into it. Tips it into the outside. How will this co well, manages to hold on to the lead? What guts and determination from Williams. Obviously had no vision with the goggles. It's obviously not what you want to be doing, whipping your goggles off at such a close time to the chequered flag coming out. But you can see the eyes, the determination on the Empire Kawasaki rider. And Mather's right there as well as they go down into the Thor left-hand turn for the last time. Oh, mistake there by Williams. Dennis trying absolutely everything right now to see if he can get something done, but Williams is holding on. For the last time, through the sweeping right-hander, through the AMX corner and into the left, we've got the tight inside rut here that Dennis absolutely loves, and a last chance dis ditch effort for the Gas Gas rider as he makes his way towards the checkered flag. And first ever overall for Campbell Williams. What a moment for the Empire Kawasaki rider. What a great, great finish to the race. Let's look at the Maxxis Tires MX3 Moto number three results. Of course, it was Campbell Williams, Byron Dennis, Jack Mather. We mentioned them many, many times. Cannon back there in fourth. Kobe Drew, as we said, fantastic effort. Also, Olander back there to seventh. Tao got back up to eighth. Ryan King with a fantastic result as well. And Cooper Rowe. Great job to our top 10. Lachlan Morris, Frederick Taylor there in 13th. Angus Pierce and back in 14th, Cade Kingsford. Yeah, great results for a lot of these rides. Virtual was back there, the rider we saw in the first, uh, second race, I should say, really having a big performance. Kai Woods all the way back there in 38th as we head down to Cape with our winners. And in P1 for the round, your first round win ever in this class and race win for today. Congratulations, Campbell Williams on the Empire Kawasaki. That start line issue you had, wow, it was just an insane ride from you. Yeah, thank you. Nah, we couldn't get my hole shot in, uh, like on the 15 second board, so had no hole shot and I thought I could still try and get a good start, but unfortunately popped a wheelie out and I was pretty far back, but I just charged through the pack and the boys made a mistake and I was able to capitalise and take the race win, but yeah, pretty gnarly conditions out there. A lot of hard work's gone into this win, so well done. Thank you. Thanks, boys. Championship points as they stand. Byron Dennis, 139. Mather, 135. Williams, 110.
Kai Woods 105 and Kobe Drew on 99 back there in fifth place. Travis Olander, Liam Owens ninth and Connor Tao in tenth place. What a championships this is. What a fantastic race from MX3. Huge crowd here. Time for a quick break. When we come back, MX2, moto number two. Welcome back to the Penrite Oils Pro MX Championships brought to you by AMX Superstores. We're, of course, here at Maitland, and we have just seen a storm come through. Track conditions changed massively, Danny Hatt. Yeah, it's certainly thrown a spanner in the works, but the good news is, looking at the radar, that's all there is coming. So, good little bit of a downpour, but these riders are going to have a different track to what they saw right here. And this here, look at the uh, front number plate. That's a sighting lab. He has been absolutely absolutely roosted on the siding lap. So this is going to be interesting to see how this one pans out for the rest. We take a look at the Pirelli MX2 lineup. Dobson, Bud, Todd, Crawford, Cosford after a big one, and I don't believe he's going to make it back out there in this race. Noah Ferguson, Matt Moss, Ryan Alexanderson, Reid Taylor. Now, you mentioned we will be seeing Matt Moss out there in a bit of a warrior effort, even though he's got stitches in the elbow. Yep, split the elbow open. I did speak to him. He's all good, but, of course, needed to get those stitches in place. As we get set for the final race today of the MX2 class, it is going to be difficult. It's going to be tricky. Oh, oh one of the right is hitting the gate just there. It was a bit of a roll start there from one of them. I'm not sure who it was. It looked like a blue fender and someone got hit the gate for sure. There's a couple of Yamahas ahead of the pack. Both of the Circo Yamaha boys. Dobson from Reese Budd. And there we see, is that number 70? 70? Yeah. Benny Novak in there in third place. Oh, wow. Time to shine. Yeah, what a, uh, what a start. Look, is that a... Uh... No, that's not Crawford just there, so we'll keep an eye out to where everyone is. That start line thing may come back to us. I'm not sure. There was Crawford by the looks of it in about fourth or fifth in the shot there. There looks Caden Mini after not the best first moto. He finds himself up there well in the top five. Great start from him. Benny Novak also. Oh, no, sorry. That's number 86. Reed Taylor. Reed Taylor. Seven whole shot award going to Jesse Dobson. We saw him up the front in moto number one, but unfortunate uh, awkward crash in that second to last turn puts him on the ground. So hopefully he oh! gets back up. There goes Crawford. Crawford. So Crawford just done like a Mario Kart spin U-turn there and uh, on the ground as quick, quick as you can imagine. He needs to get back and going, which is going to be a monumental task in these conditions. 55 machine there. That is Hayden Smith that was up the inside of Caden Minia just up and over. As we see, there he is on the left of the shot. 66 is Minia also there. He sits back there in sixth place. So Wilson Todd on our timing says he's back there in seventh. Can you see where he is? There he is actually just gone through shot. Uh, Ryan Alexanderson also is in amongst that little group. Brody Connolly, yeah, 24th place. So I was about to mention the gate dropped exceptionally quick when we come back to it. I was going to say, look, in these conditions, we know how fast Brody Connolly is. I know he's a bit under the weather, but in these conditions, if anyone can ride this kind of uh, wet, slippery stuff, it's Brody Connolly. Reed Taylor has moved himself into third place, getting around Benny Novak. It's just very difficult. Okay, let's look at this replay. Here right. is the 199 of Crawford. It looks like everything is going okay, but just popped out of that rut. Yep. Front wheel rode up that right side and just spun her out. Very lucky not to get clipped by another one of the rides. I know someone did hit his bike, but no one was to hit him. Here we go, 86. That is Reed Taylor. Great to see him up there. He can be exceptionally fast. And right now, sitting there in third place and closing down a little bit on Bud. These riders, though, really need to come together with this track to know exactly how to get around here smoothly. So we have a little bit of a look here. Dobson from Bud, Reed Taylor, Benny Novak, Wilson Todd continues to hold down a top five position. So out of the key players from a points perspective, Wilson Todd continues to shine. I know he'd like to be a little bit further up in the pack, but his main competition when it comes to points find themselves a little ways down the field. Caden Minion, not too bad. 
There is Moss actually trying to get around the outside of Caden Minia. He's made up a couple of passes, and I think... No, that one there is Ferguson that's also in amongst that group. So very hard for us to see from the front end view. We do get to catch the side. There is Ferguson, the 29 machine, going around the outside of Minia. He sits in there behind Matt Moss, the 102 blue bike just there. As they go into this long right sweeper. So Ferguson, two rider pass in a couple of corners. So he could be moving forwards. Another rider that we need to mention, just there in shot, I feel, is the 32 of Liam Andrews. So goggles off just there for Matt Moss. It's got to be so hard vision out there at the moment. And I think what we're seeing, when that rain first came down, as you called it, Danny, it's about the best that the track's going to be since we get this rain. It's going to deteriorate for a little bit now. Yeah, before it comes good, it will be a bit worse. As we see Ferguson trying to make the pass, and it looks like he could have this one done on the 32 machine of Liam Andrews. So, good start up there for Andrews. Another good top 10. Yeah, and just look, keep an eye on the riders and just how much they are reefing at those tear-offs, those roll-offs, trying to keep that vision because it is so difficult, especially now. There's another element being brought into it. It's already hard to see the ruts, the bumps, and the lines with a track that has so many shadows. You now have even deeper low colors or light and plus higher contrasting highlights out there to throw you off completely. Those lines, so difficult to see at this present point in time. Now, Danny, let me point out to you, let's take a look at round points. Equal at the moment on 42, Reese Budd and Wilson Todd. It will be Reese Budd that comes out on top with the overall due to a count back. And what an amazing feat that would be for the Circo Yamaha rider. Great to see these bounce backs from these riders. Look, the dust on screen. Can you believe there's actually dust around this track? But yeah, great to see Bud is back up there. As we see on screen, there is Ferguson with the different line through the splits. Can he get the drive out of here or will Reed Taylor be able to hold on? He has certainly got the better drive out of that particular part. But Ferguson dives down the inside. Separate lines here. Who can get through the ruts the best? Another rider that we uh, we have expected to see a lot out of this year has been Ferguson again. Just one of those things where maybe they haven't had the starts or things gone their way exactly the way that should have and uh, hasn't really shown too much up the front, but certainly here a very strong performance by the Gas Gas rider in Ferguson there in fourth place. He sits a little bit back behind Todd though. Now, what a charge through the pack for Nathan Crawford. Made his way up to seventh place. However, he's 12 seconds back behind Ryan Alexanderson. So, he's got no goggles on. It's going to be hard to get much further up than where he is. However, if you get on the back of a rider and you've got no goggles in these muddy conditions, you kind of have to pounce immediately, don't you, Danny? Yeah, the last thing you want to do is get filled in continuously trying to make that pass. As we see, Crawford continues to keep that speed up. A two-minute lap time the last time around. Uh, next three places in, in front of him are all slower. Four seconds for Reed Taylor. So there's a good chance he could still get up there. Hit quick glance over. You see it right there. Looking over to see where the next rider was. Ryan Alexanderson finds himself in fifth place. He's only four seconds back from Ferguson. So, fantastic job from him. He's strung together a really quite a good day here, Alexanderson. Yeah, great to see him up there. We mentioned it the first moto through our live stream, just how good of a race he was having then. And he's backed it up with this one. We look at one of the lapped riders just there and wait for the next rider to come through, which would be Crawford in behind them. So this has been a big ride. There he is, Crawford, the orange bike around the outside. Looks like Taylor behind them. So Crawford's moved up past Taylor and uh, continues to move forwards with some quick lap times. There he is, Crawford in a 59. He is matching the race leader. So he is not done yet with two and a half minutes to go. There's still some room to move. Potentially, he's got another couple of places in front of him he could get. Potentially up into the top five. Danny Ham, we have got two and a half minutes on the clock, plus a lap to go. Jesse Dobson has looked amazing so far as he stretches that lead over 10 seconds. We've got almost 12 second gap over his Circo Yamaha teammate, Reese Budd. And those provisional championship points will just stretch out even further for Wilson Todd with another great result. He still manages to hold down third place. 
when we did see that shot of him going down, he was right on the back wheel of Reese Budd. Yeah, put on a nice charge, and he rides this stuff very well. And I would have expected a little more from him at one thaggy and possibly even challenge his teammate ever so slightly. He just rides so smooth and calculated in the wet conditions, but a little bit of a mistake here in Moto 2, unfortunately. And that there is the gap between uh, Alex Anderson and Crawford. Oh, a hard landing there yeah, for Crawford. Yeah, almost looked like he slipped a neutral path. Yeah, Mr. Gear there wasn't expecting that one. You can see the mud on his face. So he's copped a bit of roost already. You can see him ducking the head right there, trying to stay out of it. But there's potential here that he could make this pass up into fifth place behind Alex Anderson. A much better run through that left hand of the Thor left. Here's Nathan Crawford on the factory KTM. Switches across to the inside. And he'll swing to the outside here. Good run into this turn. Bit of momentum. Oh, mistake there too by Alex Anderson. It's going all out. Crawford up to the inside. Not quite close enough here, but in these splits, he could get around him. Great run from Crawford as he makes his way up and over the finish line into this split section. Heads for the outside and let's follow him through as he tips it into the right hander. Is it going to be enough? Not too bad, but Alex Anderson had some nice form through the left right section there. He's going to have to try to remount another challenge as Nathan Crawford. Well, it doesn't look like it's too far away. The backhand sliding out all over the place. Good run around the outside here. Could set him up nice and low. Great line around the outside. I don't think I've seen anyone take that line all day. So there is another one down for Crawford. Alex Anderson falls back one position, but he is uh, probably seven seconds up to the next place rider. Yeah, it's going to be a big call for Crawford to make his way all the way up to his arch nemesis, Wilson Todd. I can't see that happening. Only one second difference lap time between Ferguson and Crawford the last time. Crawford being the better of that, but with the time running out here, I don't feel he's going to have enough time to get up there and collect another position. Have a look to the outside here. This is the pass made by Crawford. Look to the outside on this up ramp. Stays nice and low. Gets a great drive. And that there is the difference going up and over. Allowed him to carry more speed, which puts him into that fifth place position. Looking absolutely awesome at the moment, but having to charge from way too far back, unfortunately, for Nathan Crawford. It's all about Jesse Dobson at the moment. He's going to take the win. But Reese Budd, his teammate, and Wilson Todd tied on 42 points for the round, Danny. Yeah, and Crawford on 41. So super close between all three riders. As they go up and over the finish, that was Crawford, of course. Dobson continues to stretch it out. Now, what a moment this will be for not only Reese Budd, but for his dad, Damo, the whole family. Correct me if I'm wrong, but will this be Reese Budd's first ever MX2 overall victory? I think so. I think we saw his first race win last year. So this potentially, yeah, could be the overall that he's been searching for. Yeah, I believe this is his first ever win. We've, we've seen a, a moto victory, but overall staring down the barrel. So pressure cooker moments for him as we are on the last lap board for Jesse Dobson. What a race it is for the Circo Yamaha team. 1-2. And the first overall for Reese Budd if things stay the way they are. Wilson Todd won't mind too much back there in third place because the points that he will carry into the next round and stretch out even further, once again, the championship points lead. Through the Thor left for the last time is the Circo Yamaha rider, Jesse Dobson again. A glance over the shoulder to see if he can see anyone close to him with 12.9 seconds. He's not going to see the next rider at all as he moves his way through the last couple of turns for the last time today here at Maitland. What a silky smooth ride for Circo Yamaha rider number 14 on the Yamaha 250cc four-stroke. Fist pumps going out there and take a bow. Jesse Thompson takes a win. A sensational victory here at Maitland.
you take a look at the Pirelli MX2 Moto number two results. Jesse Dobson, Reese Budd, Wilson Todd only just in front of Noah Ferguson as they cross the line. Absolutely nothing between them. Crawford was back there in fifth after that crash. Alex Anderson, Taylor Andrews with another good result. Minia got himself to ninth and Yokoyama back there in tenth. 11th place for Benny Novak after such a fantastic start on the number 70 machine. Brody Connolly, not where he wanted to be, but still getting points there back in 12th. Chandler Burns, Hugh McKay, Liam Atkinson, your top 15. Fitzpatrick back there in 20th. A few more of our uh, big name riders that uh, we'd like to see up there a bit more, but unfortunately some bad results for them, some bad luck. And one of them, Matt Moss back there, Miles Gilmore, Brock Flynn, you know, guys that have come out of MX3 that uh, we expect to see up there as well. Let's go down to Kate. And in P1, I think you've got a few fans here today. Reese Bard from Circo Yamaha, your first overall for MX2 class. I can see you're really emotional. Tell us what's going through your mind right now. Uh, still truly, to be honest, I'm lost for words. You know, it's, uh, it's been a lot of hard work to, um, you know, to go into this. So uh, I just got to thank my whole family, my whole team for sticking behind me. We've had a rough few rounds, but, uh, you know, three, two motor scores. I kept on two wheels, um, you know, conditions. We got we got a whole lot of different conditions today and I, uh, I performed in both. So, um, you know, congrats to my teammate for his first, uh, I think it's his first career race win. So congrats to him. Uh, so to, to go one, two in that final motor for Soko Yamaha is truly amazing. Got my little lucky charm over here, my little nephew. Um, he was there for Newcastle Supercross last year. Got my first race win. He's back again. Got my first overall. So, um, yeah, I just got to say a massive thank you to the whole Circo Yamaha team, everyone involved. Um, to these guys as well, Polar Pools, they're, they're local here. Uh, thanks so much to him for, for his support. Uh, but his, him and his kids out here today. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful for everyone behind me. I'm, as you can see, tears are coming. <laughs> I'm so happy. It's a good crowd here. Guys, can we give it up for Reese Bud? <laughs> <laughs> wow, what an awesome way to celebrate your first ever victory. Congratulations, Reese Bud. Fantastic effort, and hopefully we get to see some momentum building on that as we take a look now at the Pirelli Championship points for MX2 class. Wilson Todd stretches that lead out over Brony Connolly on 120. Nathan Crawford sits there in third, 116. Bud back there in 108. Minia, 107. Dobson, Andrews, Ferguson, Barham, and Alexanderson after a great result today. A yeah, terrific job from all of our MX2 riders. Well, I think the big winner was Maitland. What a fantastically prepared track we saw. Great round here and some exceptional racing as well across all the classes. Cannot wait to move to our next rounds. And also good to have the big screen. Fantastic addition. Well, make sure you join us May the 28th as we head to the historical Gilman Circuit just on the outskirts of Adelaide for round four of the Penrod Oils Pro MX Championships brought to you by AMX Superstores, where hometown hero Brett Metcalf will be hoping for podium glory. We've also got rounds five and six of the Australian Off-Road Championships presented by MX Store and Yamaha at Eden Hope in Victoria, close to the South Australian border, which will take place on July the 22nd and 23rd. And while you're at it, make sure you lock in round four of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship presented by Motul as it heads next to Hidden Valley Raceway in Darwin, Northern Territory from the 16th to the 18th of June. Whether it's Pro MX, AORC or ASBK, get yourself to the track live and get tickets online. Well, Danny, what a day it was. Cannot wait for the next rounds, Lee. Today is an exceptional experience with this motocross racing. It's going to be something else. Well, what an incredible day of racing we've seen here at Maitland for round four of the Penrod Oils Pro MX Championship brought to you by AMX Superstores. On behalf of Danny Ham, Kate Peck and myself, Lee Hogan, thanks for your company. The Pro MX gates will next drop on the 28th of May at the iconic Gilman Circuit in Adelaide, South Australia. So make sure you join us for all the action. Goodbye for now.